Dear students, in this video, I am going to explain methodology, experimental part, qualitative and quantitative analysis of thin layer chromatography. In the previous video, I have explained introduction, principle, selection of stationary and mobile phase. Link of video is given in the description box. If you are new on my channel, please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. Now let's start. Experimental part of TLC. The first step is preparation of TLC plate. Finely grounded stationary phase is coated on the glass, metal or plastic plate as a thin layer. The approximate thickness of layer should be 0.25 mm. Binding agents such as gypsum, starch or hydrated silicon dioxide are added to the adsorbent. Commonly used adsorbent is silica gel, which is non-adhering to the glass plate or metal plate. So some binding agent must be added to the silica gel. And if the binding agent is gypsum, the name on the bottle is given as silica gel G, where G stands for gypsum. A fluorescent indicator like zinc silicate can also be added to the adsorbent to make the plate fluorescing. If fluorescing agent is added, then now the name will be like this one, silica gel GF, where G is for gypsum and F is for fluorescent indicator. The glass plates of different size are used like 20 by 20 centimeter, 20 by 10 centimeter or 20 by 5 centimeter. Microscopic slides can also be used to prepare the TLC plate, but these are generally used for routine analysis uh, in the bulk drug industries uh, like uh, checking the reaction completion. These are some plates uh, which are used in TLC. Now coating of adsorbent on glass plate. The main aim of this step is to get uniform thickness of layer. Many techniques are used for coating the adsorbent on glass plate. Now before going for these techniques, first one should prepare the slurry of adsorbent. The slurry of adsorbent is prepared in some suitable solvent. Solvent should be volatile in nature because if the plates are dried and dried plates are used for an the first method of coating adsorbent on plate is pouring method. Here, measured amount of slurry is poured on the plate and plate is dipped back and forth to spread the slurry uniformly. Next is dipping method where two plates are dipped in the slurry back to back. In this method, both plate will get coated by the slurry uh, on one side. Next method is spraying method. Here, the suspension or slurry of adsorbent is poured in the sprayer and then it is applied on the plate. Next method is spreading method. The slurry is poured in the DLC spreader and the thickness of layer is adjusted by adjusting knob in the spreader. Now the spreader is rolled on the plate or the plate is moved while applying the slurry. Now first three methods are not giving much uniform layer of adsorbent. But the fourth method that is spreading method will give much uniform layer of adsorbent on plate and that's why it is preferred. In the fourth method, the thickness of a layer can be adjusted between 0 to 2 mm. Next, pre-coated plates. Nowadays, ready-to-use plates are available. Now, these plates are expensive. The thickness varies from 0 to uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 mm. Next step is activation of plates. The coated plates are kept in air for 30 minutes and then in hot air oven at 110 degrees Celsius for another 30 minutes. Activation of plate means drying of the plate. The plate should be completely dried before use. If the plate is having some kind of moisture, then the analysis will go wrong and the spots will get spread. Next step is purification or washing of plates. The commonly used adsorbent is silica gel and silica gel contains iron as impurity, which may cause considerable distortion of chromatograph. Now, how to get uh, purif how to purify these plates then? To purify, the air-dried plates are developed in methanol and concentrated HCl. The composition is 9 is to 1 volume by volume. Iron gets migrated with solvent to the upper edge of plate. The plates are then again dried and activated. Washing can be done for pre-coated TLC plates also. The washing will remove iron impurity from the silica gel plates. After purification, the plates are ready for use. Next is application of sample. Dilute sample solution should be applied on the TLC plate. 
if the highly concentrated sample solutions are applied the analysis will not be correct the spots will get spread or the spots will have telling effect so dilute solutions are used in the tlc with the help of pencil uh, now before applying sample with the help of pencil baseline should be drawn at the 2 cm above the lower edge of plate baseline should not immerse in the mobile phase while developing the plate now suppose this is the tlc plate and we have to draw a baseline with the pencil at 2 cm from the lower edge of plate a capillary tube can be used to apply the sample on plate or alga micro syringe can also be used if we want to apply two spots on the tlc plate the distance between two spots should be 2 cm excessive spotting will lead to smearing smudging or spot overlap which will cause difficulty in identification of separated components next step is selection of development tank different size and different shape development tanks are available for tlc the commonly used development chamber is flat bottom chamber twin trough chambers are also available where the bottom is divided into two parts and we can put two different mobile phases at a time cylindrical tanks are also used in tlc next point is chamber saturation the tank should be lined inside with filter paper moistened with mobile phase so as to get saturated with atmosphere a filter paper is kept inside the chamber dipped in mobile phase to get chamber saturation if the chamber saturation is not done age effect will occur now what is edge effect? Edge effect is where the solvent front moves faster in the middle of plate than the edges of plate. Therefore, the spots are distorted and not regular. In regular TLC plate, the solvent front is in straight line. While in TLC plate with edge effect, the solvent front is like this one. The solvent is running fast in the middle than the edges of plate. So chamber saturation is very important step in TLC development. Next is development technique. First technique is ascending TLC or vertical TLC which is a conventional method. Here first we have to select the chamber, fill the chamber with mobile phase, do the chamber saturation and then place the TLC plate in the chamber. Uh, one uh, care should be taken that the baseline should not dip in the mobile phase. Then keep the lid and allow the plate to develop. The solvent flow against gravity because of capillary action. That means the solvent will run from bottom to top due to the capillary action and the spots will develop. Next is descending TLC. The flow of solvent is assisted by gravity. Hence the development is faster. The solvent holder is on the top of development chamber. Here the development chamber is somewhat different and the mobile phase tank is at the upper portion of development chamber. The plate is held by uh, some holder and the mobile phase will run according to gravity and spots will get developed. Next is horizontal TLC. The plate is kept in horizontal manner. The spotting is done in the middle of plate and the mobile phase is added slowly through the sides. These are horizontal development chains. Next one is multiple development TLC. It is similar to vertical or ascending TLC. After developing once, the plate is dried and then kept again in the same mobile phase in the same direction. Without detection, the multiple developments are done. Multiple development is performed to separate some complex mixtures. Next is stepwise development. Here the plates used are long in length, generally 30 cm plates are used. First half plate is developed in some specific mobile phase. It is taken out from the chamber, dried and without detection it is kept in the another mobile phase for next development. And after full plate develop, developed, the plate is taken out and visualized. In this way the stepwise development is performed. Next one is two dimensional TLC. Here the TLC plate is developed in uh, ascending order. Uh, the first development is in the ascending order. Then the plate is taken out, dried and then it is rotated at 90 degrees. And once again it is kept for second development. That means the mobile phase is now running at 90 degrees to the first run. This is how the two dimensional TLC is performed. 
descending TLC, horizontal TLC, multiple TLC, stepwise TLC and two dimensional TLC. These methods are performed to separate complex mixtures. Now next step is visualization of spots. The colored spots can be directly visualized but the colorless spots will require some technique for visualization and the first method is non-specific method. Here the number of spots can be detected but exact nature and type of compound is not known. In non-specific method, first method is iodine chamber method where the brown or umber colored spots are observed when the TLC plate is kept in the tank with iodine vapors. After development, the plate is removed from the developing tank and it is dried in the oven and the dried plate is now kept in the iodine chamber where the iodine crystals are present and iodine vapors are present. Iodine will get adhered on the unsaturation point of sample and brown spots will get developed. Next non-specific method is UV chamber for fluorescent compound. The TLC plate is kept in UV chamber and observed at 254 nanometer or 365 nanometer. At this wavelength, the fluorescent compound will fluoresce and get detected. Next is specific method. Here, the specific visualizing reagent is used to detect the compound. Here, we come to know the nature of compound and uh, it will help in identification of compound also. For example, ferric chloride dye is used to identify phenolic and tannin compounds, while ninhydrin is used for detection of amino acids. Next one is after visualization, calculation of RF value or retardation factor. Now this is the TLC plate with baseline. We have spotted the sample here and then kept the plate for development. After development and visualization, we come to know that the sample has traveled this much distance and the solvent has traveled this much distance. Now it is known as solvent front. The distance traveled by sample is y and the distance traveled by solvent from baseline is x and by using these two distance we can calculate rf value the formula for rf value is distance traveled by solute from baseline upon distance traveled by solvent from baseline rf value it ranges from 0 to 1 it is characteristic to each compound if the stationary phase and mobile phase is identical the unknown compound can be identified by comparing its RF value with RF value of standard. The RF value is used for qualitative analysis. If it matches with standard, the identification is done. Next is RX value. The RX value can be calculated by using distance traveled by sample from baseline upon distance traveled by standard from baseline. This formula is used to calculate Rx value. This value is also helpful in identification of sample. It always closer to 1. Next is Rm value. Rm can be derived by the formula Rm is equal to log 1 upon Rf minus 1. To find, Rm value is used to find out whether the compound belongs to the homologous series. Now the next point is quantitative analysis of TLC. Here some direct methods are used where the quantitation is determined or it is carried out directly on the TLC plate and some indirect methods are used where the substance is removed from the adsorbent and then the amount of substance is determined. First we will go for direct methods. First method is visual assessment of chromatogram. Next is quantitative TLC incorporating densitometer Next is direct spectrophotometry on thin layer. Now in visual assessment of chromatogram, the spot area is determined by the eye. That means human eye is the detector here. The method is based on relation between spot and the amount of substance. If the amount of substance is more, the spot area will be more. Next method is quantitative TLC incorporated in densitometer. The TLC plate is kept in densitometer to measure the density of spot. Here also the direct relationship is there between density of spot and amount of solute in the sample. If the amount of solute is more, the density of spot will be more. Next is direct spectrophotometric 
spectrophotometry on thin layer here the characterization of chromatogram zone by reading the absorption or fluorescence curves directly from the tlc is done by chromatogram spectrophotometer introduced by zizi stahl and jork these are the direct method now indirect method here the spot area is cooked using knife or spoon then it is extracted with some suitable solvent and afterwards the stationary phase is filtered off the extract is then analyzed by conventional methods like colorimetry uv spectrophotometry fluorimetry flame photometry or electrochemical methods can be used to determine the amount of solute in sample so these are points which are performed in practical of tlc i hope you understood all these points if you are new to my channel please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon thank you for watching my video thank you very much